So about three months ago, I made a Roblox game entirely with block code. And although I wasn't expecting much, the game and video surprisingly blew up. And now I'm left with a half-baked sword fighting game which could really use an update. Lucky for me, I have an amazing Discord that helped me generate a bunch of ideas for this block code revamp. So here's the mission. I have to implement all of my fans' feedback and suggestions onto the Roblox game all within three days and all with block code. Is it possible? Is it profitable? Will I die? Well, that's what you're about to find out. All right, it's day one, and I think I have an idea of how I'm going to start this update. I'm pretty sure the initial issues that people had with my game were that the maps were a bit too boring and repetitive. Now, how am I going to fix this? Simple, map voting. If people get to determine which map they fight on, they'll be more engaged with actually playing the game. So, I guess it's then time to start coding with block code, which by the way, uses this really cool plugin called Blockwa to actually transform Roblox coding into blocks. And uh... With this plugin, I previously made this cursed round progression Let's system, which I'm basically gonna have to revamp if I want to suit it to map voting. So, uh, yeah then, let's get started. So what I want to do is I want this map voting GUI to like slide in right before a match so you can vote for it, because I think that'd be pretty cool. So what I've done now is I've actually added a remote event here, so that when it's called, the GUI will slide in and out respectively. And to actually make the GUI move, I have this local script inside the GUI that I'm gonna code in right now, which, oh, that has the old code in there. Don't look at that. But anyway, I'm a, I'm a Roblox block coding master now, so I think I have a better idea on how to use it. So unlike in Scratch, unfortunately, this doesn't have a when flag clicked kind of situation. It's just you coding normally like you would in Loire. But anyway, this is the block I need fired by a server, and then I gotta put the remote event here. So how I'm gonna do that is, look at this, oh, delete that. World, instance, and then I can click this little, uh, little microscopy thingy majiggy, and um, I can click the remote event here, and it'll automatically assign it to that, which is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, after that, it's pretty straightforward, just like Scratch, you know, stacking blocks on top of each other, declaring variables like that, adding logic like if statements, like this, dragging variable names right inside the conditions, and it's pretty intuitive, actually. It did take a bit to get used to at the start, but I mean, it's gotten easier the more I use it, even though it's a bit ineffective at, like, doing stuff, because you have to drag every block, and once you try to duplicate it, it does this really weird thing where it, like, gets out, and then you have to click back in. But anyways, after only, like, five minutes of coding, I'm already done this whole GUI system, which should work, if we test it, first gotta click save, close this. Uh, yep, that's the GUI as you can see there. And if we join the game, and we go into the server, let's have a look. I'm gonna enter this command. And if everything works out right, fingers crossed, it should show up the GUI. Hey, that's actually kind of legit, I'm not even gonna lie. Hey, that's not even that bad, what the heck? That's better than I expected. Let's try making it go back. Oh, damn, I'm impressed. After that point, it was mildly easy to finish the rest of the map system. I say <clears> mildly <throat> because I accidentally deleted a whole what? chunk of my no. code in the middle. But uh, importing the images and making the block code work was actually kind of fun. Seriously though, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. And in the end, I had made a server script to count the votes, a few custom blocks that I never dared to even touch in Scratch, as well as revamp the main code, which worked pretty damn well. Now all I had to do was make a couple more maps, and then it was finally the end of day one. Alright, it's day two, and I just woke up and had a major idea. Okay, so as I said earlier, my Discord had some great ideas for a new game mode, but I didn't really know how to implement them, until I realized. I could have a random thing at the start of a game, or in the map voting, where it would have a chance to select a game mode. This could include stuff like, I don't know, lower health, lower damage, battle royale, you get the point. Anyway, back on topic. Now I know how to implement this, I want to make a really cool hide-and-seek idea a guy named Obs had in my Discord, which shouldn't be too hard. So, I guess the first thing I'll need to complete in this god-awful system is the GUI message I will appear at the start. I'll just add a bit of text here, a background, 
and it's done. It's not that complicated to be honest, but what I want to do with this is, similar to the map voting, it'll have a chance to like slide in and show a random game mode at the start of a game, which I think is a pretty good idea. Oh, and one more thing. To practice some good Roblox coding, which I never thought I'd even mention alongside block code, I have a few module scripts that represent each game mode and have their own special function. Alright, so without further ado, let's go into it. So for this module script, I'm gonna need three functions that like, uh, indicate the start of the round, like the middle of the round and the end of the round, so I think I can use these to do that. This should be pretty easy. And then now I've set it up, um, I just realized a crucial thing, which is that I can't copy over anything from the other script here. So this is actually the normal round system, I want to get that done over with uh, first, but I have to then manually put everything in, which is a shortcoming of this plugin, but... Oh well, I mean, I can revamp some things in the process. Alright, that took way too long, but um, at least now I have the entire module script for... Uh, the normal round and I tested it and it works thankfully. So now I can work on the main course which is hide and seek. There's a lot of elements to this as you saw in the original message. For example there's fog for seekers, hiders don't get a sword but get sped up when hurt, and there's also a time limit for the round. I guess I'll start with making the code that assigns the roles. In my head I think it would work if there was one seeker every four people. So if there's five or more there would be two seekers, just because I want it to be fair. I've done this through a function that basically runs once at the start of every single round, and what it does is it takes the number of seekers, which I get by dividing the number of players by four, and puts it here, where it uses the number to randomly select it from the available people. To make the seekers have fog vision, I'll just find an event here that activates it for only them. I also put a red highlight so that it's obvious who the murderer is. The last piece which will finally complete this mode is the hider advantage. I need to make it such that if you're under 50 health, you have increased speed, which gives you a second chance against the seekers. Now, how do you do that in block code? Well, all I have to do is just constantly check if they are under that threshold in the game loop and change the speed accordingly. After that's done, the system's pretty much finished. Although it looks like one of those awful blocks of code I used to make on Scratch, the great part is that now I can mass produce other modes as well, because I've made these in module scripts. I just need to test it in game first. All right, I think I'm gonna vote for the city because it's a bit more expansive and good to play on this game mode. All right, I hope I'm the seeker. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at me, alright. So I'm meant to find the other guy. Oh look, that fog atmosphere is actually pretty good, hey? It works really well. Where are they? There they are, alright. I'm gonna kill them. Oh, actually, I want to test if, if they're below half health. It does that really cool thing. i switch to perspective. Oh nice, yeah, you can tell I'm just a tiny bit faster than usual. But if I uh, heal back to normal. I'm slow again. Nice! I think this game mode's working pretty well. Okay, I'll just finish him off first. <coughs> Seekers won! Let's go! <laughs> okay, one final thing before I can call today done. I said earlier I wanted something in the map voting that allowed you to select another game mode or unique thing. So, I made some ultra rare maps that have special mechanics and will only pop up in map voting very rarely. For example, here's my favorite one, loot box mode, or basically battle royale. It's a 1 in 100 chance of happening, and the map is just littered with loot boxes that will give you a random weapon or health boost. Of course, all of this is in block code, which took a lot of time. But that's not it. I thought the map selection was looking a little bit bland, so I added a few more maps and a bunch of new game modes. Anyway, that's the day recapped. I could finally go to sleep, ready for the last challenge. Okay, it's the last day and honestly, I'm exhausted. Things aren't going too well, and it isn't helping that this plugin is so laggy. Like, look at this, I, are you seeing this? I, are you seeing- But luckily, there's only three more things we need to do. Number one, the item shop. Number two, badges. And number three, a leaderboard. First up is the item shop. You know the drill. I quickly cooked up some simple GUI and made some block code that open it when you click this side button. The items on sale won't be paid to win. They'll just be skins that you can put on your sword so you'll look cool, and will only be equipable if you have enough wins. These are some of the skins that will be on offer, with this one having, uh, I don't really know how to call it, what, sparkly things? Anyway, onto the code. I put the prices and data of all the skins in this module script, which I could then read from the client. The way I want to approach this is by cloning a box for each item in the shop. The stats from the other script will then determine the text in the boxes. So I need to use this function that reads through every item and returns its stats, but it doesn't exist huh? in this block code plugin. Thankfully, the workaround is just entering the format into this block, which is 
kind of scuffed, but I don't know, it works, I guess. And then after that, all I have to do is just use the INV values to set the text, which I can do by searching up property, set property, set text of uh, plus instance here. Oh, actually, I need to clone this first. Um, all right, I got to find the text box inside this uh, actual frame. Oh, bro, why are you doing that? Can you uh, get out of the way, please? All right. And it's done. Wait a sec. The shop items aren't in order of cheapest to priciest. Uh, that looks kind of ugly. So um, I'm doing a bit of research in the forum, and the solution's actually simple. You just have to set the layout order of each text box to its price, which orders them automatically. This is all fine and dandy, but how will the server then know what sword you have equipped or are able to buy? It's easy. I'll just add a value in the player that saves the current equipped weapon that we can use to give the sword at the start of the normal match and change when the player wants to. And look at that, it's working. The second thing on the list are game badges. I put a poll up the other day and the majority of people want badges for winning a normal sword fight in a packed server, winning the hide and seek mode as a seeker, and 50 or 100 wins. So I quickly designed some icons for them, which look pretty cool if I do say so myself. To award them, I only need to check if someone meets the conditions at the end of a match using these blocks. I have to say, the selection of blocks in this plugin is pretty good though, there are bits and pieces for every feature you can think of. The third and final thing on the list is the wins leaderboard. This is gonna take a bit to be honest, because I have no idea how to make one. Consequently, I had to search for some examples online, and just take a little inspiration from them, aka copy what they had. But anyways, after all of that, the game is finally done. Yeah! Look at it, man. It's it's beautiful. And if you guys have any doubt that this wasn't all in block code, oh boy. Oh boy. I do not know what to tell you. Now, all I need is some friends to test it. Because this guy called me out in my last video for having only one friend. Three testers will come and help me. So... Alright. What's up? These are all of my friends that are going to be playing today, and we're all going to choose the ocean map. All three friends. Yeah, yeah my, my, my three only friends. Oh. My three only friends. My whole three friends. Alright, as you guys can see, um, yeah, I, with four players, it's more chaotic, but it's also more fun, you know? Because the more the yeah. merrier, as, as we, all, we all say. Oh, shoot. I just got juked by Rat Consumer Yummy oh, himself. Oh, oh. oh no. Alright, you guys gonna like fight or not? Or Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're gonna get biff? You're gonna, you're gonna get murked? I'm gonna murk you, bro. Alright, buddy. Alright, buddy. Right, buddy. Right, buddy. <laughs> oh. Oh, far out. Oh. Oh, you gonna, oh. gonna get murked? Oh. gonna get murked? gonna get murked? Did get murked? <laughs> uh, if you guys want to, you can equip a skin, you know? I made the system for a reason. Yes. I have... I don't know, yeah, I have you... three wins total, bro. Alright, uh, oh, vote for the city, it's pretty big. And hint, hint, there might be a special event. If there is. Oh, oh! oh look at that, yeah. special oh, event. Oh. oh, guys, oh, 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 oh my gosh. Guys, the vision's all fogged, this is so cool. This makes for such intriguing gameplay. Rack, you just got rolled, buddy. You just wow. got rolled. No, you're terrible. Oh! You're, you're, hacking. You're, hacking. you're terrible, bro. Get beat slap, bro. Hey, rat. Rat! Stop running, bro. Rat, you've reached the end of your line. Oh, oh, we could do a cinematic R scene. Oh, this is so flipping. Cinematic. Oh! <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah! All right, yeah. GG, GG. All right, you guys are gonna really love the next weapon I'll have in me. You guys are gonna love it. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> oh, 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 damn. Oh, damn, wait, hold up. Oh! Oh, oh clapped! Clapped! Calm down, I have the high ground, Luke. <laughs> Come down. Come oh, down. Like what is that? What the heck is this dance, bro? Taxi what is this in, dance? <laughs> what is this dance? <laughs> oh my gosh. What was that move? What are you doing, bro? Oh! Oh my gosh! Chop, chopped, chopped, diced up like my onions. Diced oh, up. Oh, what do you mean, diced up like your <laughs> onions, bro? You just got wrecked. So, how did you find the game?
Okay, guys, to recap this entire experience, yes, I was able to revamp my sword fighting game with only block code in a limited time frame. I'm actually pretty happy with it. So if any of you guys do want to play this revamped version of my game, check the description and also join my Discord to tell me how it was. But I won't guarantee there aren't bugs. Oh, and also check out Blocklaw, the plugin I used as well. I would recommend you get some basic Roblox development knowledge first before you dive straight into it, but I'm not your dad, so I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and become an ultra cool member like these two people. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye